Hi everyone, welcome back. We're winding down December the 6th, winding up for the Christmas celebration tomorrow in Salyersville. Hope to see you downtown. It's going to be a beautiful day weather-wise. The parade, I'm told, is simply awesome. The biggest ever. Uh, and it's actually going to go through twice. I'll remind you about that in just a few minutes. Well, let me go ahead and just do that now in case I forget. As I announced last night, they have decided to, for safety and for pleasure reasons as well. The parade will come all the way through Sagersville in the fashion that it always does, starting at 6 o'clock, and then it will go all the way back through to where it started at the McGoffa County Funeral Home and Logan Corporation before uh, town clears and anyone is able to get in their cars and leave to make sure everyone gets out safe and it gives us a chance to see it twice, and I have no complaints about that. It's going to be a very nice evening. Now, I did air a portion of the indictments returned yesterday by the McGoffa County Grand Jury on last night's program. Uh, there was a technical issue, a computer issue uh, on Foothills that kept the show from being seen on that, work at, that network at 6 and 11. My apologies. They've since fixed that. We're back on tonight, so no harm, no foul. I will have those indictments and all the others on tonight's program and some other news to share with you. I also know there have been a few audio problems, according to some viewers on Howard's Cable. I'm not for sure what those are. I also want to make a brief apology uh, for the 6 o'clock program on Howard's. For the past two years, uh, the quality of the picture not as good as the 11 o'clock show, uh, and that's actually a result of Rick Howard not replacing a piece of equipment here at the studio since we moved here, as he's promised on numerous occasions. It also, if you may notice, it zooms in and cuts off about a third of the picture in its entirety. It's not an issue with the 11 o'clock show, just the 6 o'clock program, so just going to let you know not on our end with that said let's go ahead and get into headlines this evening man we've got a lot to cover by the way of course december the 6th today december the 7th tomorrow governor matt bevan has directed as such that flags at all state office buildings be lowered to half staff in observance of national pearl harbor remembrance day tomorrow now this one has a tie to hometown news even though it's a Detroit man who was sentenced to life in federal prison today. Shannon Hickson, he's 43, and he was sentenced to life today in federal uh, court by Chief U.S. District Judge Danny C. Reeves after being convicted of conspiring to distribute oxycodone and fentanyl and distribution of fentanyl resulting in at least one overdose death. He was convicted back in July after he supplied, says the courts and evidence, thousands of oxycodone pills to individuals in Lexington, who then transported those pills to Moorhead and here in Sagersville, in McGoffin County specifically. And then they were sold to local dealers and drug users. And additionally, the evidence established that Hickson had supplied heroin and fentanyl to a group of users in Lexington, which included supplying a lethal quality of fentanyl that was distributed to an Army veteran in rehab, causing that person's overdose death. Hickson has a prior conviction for trafficking in a controlled substance in the first degree. That went into the consideration for his sentencing. Once again, sentenced to life in prison. Here's a little update for you. Uh, still too early to tell where it's going to go, but it's already going south. Pardon the pun. You'll see by the map what I mean. But the flu season uh, is picking up steam and not... Uh, in a way so far that can be determined as to how the season is going to end, but the winter flu season is off to its earliest start after more than 15 years, in more than 15 years, an early onslaught of illness and flu-related illnesses in the South has begun to spread more broadly and quickly, and there's a good chance that the flu season could peak much earlier than normal. That's why the CDC says you need to take a look at this map and get your shot as soon as possible. As you'll notice, Kentucky still shaded yellow, so we're still in the lower end of the moderate scale, but man, look to the south at the high levels of flu activity shaded in red. You know, the last flu season that got started this early was back in 03 and 04, and that was a really bad one. And some experts say that they think that the early start may mean that a lot of folks are going to be just simply suffering from the flu. Now, it is still too early to tell, but you know, these folks are a lot smarter than I am and 
this is some of their predictions. They say it really depends on the viruses that are going around, and there's not a trend that they can really pin down as of right now, so it's still too early to tell if it's going to be more severe, latter, or less, but they're keeping a close eye on it. There are different types of the flu virus, and the one causing all the illnesses in the red states there, it's a surprise because it's one that usually doesn't come around until March or April after the first of the year. Good news is, is that particular virus usually isn't as dangerous for the elderly. While the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention today estimated there already have been one and three quarters of a million flu illnesses, 16,000 people put in the hospital, and 900 flu-related deaths. Last year, the flu season started off pretty mild and meek, but it turned out to be one of the longest, remember that, in 10 years? Some say it never ended. Last year, 49,000 people died, 590,000 were put in the hospital. The year before that, of course, was the real bad year. 61,000 people died, and over 800,000 people had to be hospitalized. And in both of those last two seasons, the flu vaccine performed pretty bad against the virus that was out there. So is the vaccine this year going to be the right one? Time will tell. It can be one of the hardest parts of being a parent. You can beg them, bribe them, hold them down and try to force them, and sometimes you still can't get them to take their medicine. Well, problem solved at Parkway Pharmacy with FlavorX. Let your kids customize their medicine with some of the best flavors that really do taste great, and it's totally free with your child's prescription at Parkway Pharmacy. So stop the suffering, theirs and yours, for free, and get your Flavor X flavored medicines at Parkway Pharmacy in Salyersville. <music> I'm Dr. Jason Zimmerman at Highlands ARH, the healthcare system of Appalachia. Just in time for the winter driving season and through December the 13th at Conley Tire, come in and get $70 off a set of new Michelins until the end of the year, $50 off winter and mud and snow Cooper tires and up to $150 off select sets of Goodyear's. And don't forget, six months same as cash. Stop by their Staffordsville store or go to ConleyTire.net to find out more. Merry Christmas, Dad. Yeah, sorry about the storm canceling our flights, but you got our present in the mail, right? I got it. I know exactly what it is, but I don't need a new phone. This one works fine. I figured you hadn't opened it. Oh, son, I do appreciate it, but I don't need it. Would you at least open it? Merry Christmas, Grandpa! Hey, kids. Would you look at that? It's like you're here with me. Miss you, Pops. I miss you, too. Merry Christmas from Appalachian Wireless. I know, I say it every year, but I promise you, never before has the seasonal shop been so wall-to-wall -wall filled with Christmas. The absolute most unique Christmas decor and ornaments and gifts you've ever seen under one roof in the area. Ornaments and trees of all types and colors and kinds. Table decor, dishes, all the wreaths, all the flowers, and if you're looking for gifts, they've got just about every one on your list covered. Plus, you have to see their selection of women's clothes and accessories. Gorgeous, with a wide variety of styles and sizes. So let them help you pick out the perfect outfit for any Christmas party or family get-together. And from now until Christmas, they have a new deal of the day every day. So be sure to follow them on their Facebook page for all the details at Frazier's Crater Drugs seasonal shop in downtown Salyersville. We have finally done it. After years and years of extensive testing, we not only invented the chicken sandwich, we have perfected the chicken sandwich. Come and try it and love it with a big famous dip breast strip, pickles and mayonnaise, or however you like it fixed. And if you like, make it a double. Just make your way to Lee's to get it and grab a cookie while you're there at your Sagersville Lee's Famous Recipe, where even our ice is famous.
About a dozen or so indictments returned yesterday by the sitting McGoffin County Grand Jury. I have those for you now. I uh, aired a few of those last night. We will re-air those and add the additional ones this evening as we always give local and state law enforcement 24 hours at least to try to attempt to serve those indictment arrest warrants. Several indictments tonight for burglary, assault, drugs, and other charges. 31-year-old James C. Morgan of Pee Wee Valley, Kentucky, was indicted for possession of a controlled substance First offense, possession of drug paraphernalia, DUI, alcohol or drugs, first offense, reckless driving, and being a persistent felony offender in the first degree for at least two prior felonies on his record. This relates to a traffic stop and subsequent arrest by Officer Mike Nichols, who presented the case. The possession of a controlled substance charge coming from a quantity of Schedule II narcotics that he was in possession of. Donna Walker was indicted by Officer Mike Nichols of the Sayersville PD for possession of a controlled substance in the first degree for a quantity of opiates she was arrested and charged for. Trooper Dustin Thompson with the Kentucky State Police out of Post 9 presented the case to, to the grand jury of 33-year-old Brandon Perkins of Sagersville, who was indicted on robbery in the first degree, possession of a handgun by a convicted felon, wanted endangerment in the first degree, and being a persistent felony offender in the first degree. In March of this year, he robbed with a handgun and injured a McGoffin County man stealing his car and other personal belongings. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, that car found burned at a, another location in McGoffin County sometime later, with Perkins now being indicted for those events. Travis Hall, 20, of Prestonsburg, was indicted for robbery in the first degree, possession of a handgun by a convicted felon, and wanted endangerment in the first degree. This relates to the same case as the one I just referred to against Brandon Perkins, where Hall was also said to be responsible for robbing, being in possession of a handgun, and seriously injuring or causing potential injury or death to a McGoffin County man when they stole his vehicle and personal belongings. Marcus Lockhart, 29, of Pikeville, was indicted on a single count of wanton endangerment in the first degree. This case, too, presented by Trooper Dustin Thompson with Post 9, with the indictment giving no other detail as to the nature of the crime. Sagersville Police Officer Jeremiah Watson presented a case against Russell Blaine Craft to the McGoffin County Grand Jury on theft by unlawful taking of an automobile for stealing a 1997 Ford F-150 pickup truck belonging to a Sagersville man. This goes back to a report that I aired some weeks ago uh, back in October when Kraft was alleged to have given a McGoffin County man, an older gentleman, a ride home in that older gentleman's pickup truck. And when the older gentleman woke up the next day, his pickup truck had been taken by Kraft. 32-year-old Hoker Shane May of Sagersville was indicted for robbery in the first degree and assault in the second degree. He's one of two men that are accused of assaulting and robbing and leaving naked and injured another McGoffin County man who was found lying bloodied and unclothed under the Sugar Camp Bridge in Dixie after being robbed of his personal belongings. 46-year-old Clarence Gibson of Sagersville was indicted for assault in the second degree domestic violence for causing serious physical injury to a female by means of a deadly weapon or dangerous instrument. This also goes back to an earlier report here on Your News Today when he was said to have seriously beaten a woman here in Sagersville at a local trailer park. A neighbor stepping in trying to stop that attack caused him to run off and flee into the woods just as authorities arrived. He was picked up later and has now been indicted for assault in the second. 27-year-old Tyler Runnels of Hager Hill was indicted by the McGoffin County Grand Jury on possession of methamphetamine, possession of a controlled substance in the first degree, carrying a concealed deadly weapon, possession of drug paraphernalia, and driving on a suspended operator's license. Now, this goes back to February when pulled over, Mike Nichols of the Sagersville Police Department identified him after he said that he was acting very nervous, slurring his speech. Nichols says that he found a needle and ribbon in Reynolds' pocket, uh, confirming that his driver's license was suspended. Reynolds also had a set of brass knuckles and a knife hidden in one of his boots as well. And the officer also possessed a black bag with a large rock of methamphetamine, spoons, and other paraphernalia, and a white powdery substance. Uh, they also found suspected heroin on Reynolds when he arrived at the jail and was charged in Johnson County with promoting contraband as well. 
Runnels has been jailed since September the 3rd on Johnson County charges of driving under the influence, fourth degree or greater, methamphetamine possession, driving on a suspended license, and theft by unlawful taking. Other charges on the McGoffin County, other charges on McGoffin County, other charges on today's McGoffin County indictment include giving a peace officer false information, reckless driving, and being a persistent felony offender in the first degree for at least two prior felonies on his record. 36-year-old Jessica Rose Justice of Raccoon was indicted for possession of methamphetamine, carrying a concealed deadly weapon, as well as endangering the welfare of a minor, driving on a DUI suspended license, and reckless driving. This goes back to June of this year, when again, Sagersville Police Officer Mike Nichols noticed a car swerving on Restaurant Row. Justice was behind the wheel. It was confirmed that her driver's, li driver's license was suspended, and she also had a quantity of methamphetamine in her, in her purse and about $3,500 in cash. And there were also three juveniles in the car under the age of 16. Though there were several items in the purse that belonged to Justice, you may recall when I aired this report initially, she told police the 16-year-old, her daughter that was 16-year-old, had placed the bag of meth in her purse, and it was actually her daughter's drugs. Police also found a concealed axe in the car and called social services. And then when she was taken to the Big Sandy Detention Center, jail employees found another quantity of methamphetamine concealed in a body cavity. And she was charged with promoting contraband in Johnson County as well. And the last indictment that I can report to you this evening, with more to come beginning as soon as tomorrow, is that a 44-year-old Maria Crum of Sagersville indicted on DUI, fourth offense, or greater. Now, this indictment goes back to March of 2018 when she was stopped here in Sagersville behind the wheel of a vehicle under the influence of alcohol and or drugs with at least three prior DUIs. That was March of 2018. Jail records show that she's been in jail since August of this year on Johnson County Sheriff's Department charges also for driving under the influence, fourth offense or greater, with aggravated circumstances as well as assault in the first degree, two separate counts, and driving on a DUI suspended license. Before I go on to your calendar, a couple of things I want to remind you of. Our friends at the Keeping Room are having their 20th annual Old Fashioned Christmas Open House. Tomorrow is the last day from 10 to 5. The store is full of wonderful uh, keepsakes and primitives and other things great items that you just simply can't pick up anywhere else and it's all 20 percent off in honor of their 20th year in business they've got refreshments and hot cider which is a reason to stop by all on its own tomorrow from 10 till 5 the keeping room on west maple street in downtown sagersville i have a lot of other calendar announcements which follow a lot of birthdays i had a couple of birthdays last night but since the, the show didn't air and all the networks let's hey nothing wrong with doing birthdays again Yep, birthdays kicking off tonight. The first for Zach Brown. With a lot of love and best wishes from family and from friends. Happy, happy, happy birthday. Happy birthday to Zach Brown. And birthday wishes from a long, loving list of folks, including Sarge and all the family and a long list of friends as well. Still around, happy, happy birthday to you, the family, and all of your friends. Want to wish you the very best of birthdays and hope you're feeling well. Happy birthday, Stella. Happy birthday to you. And to a super guy who's just about as goofy and crazy as he is, nice and great to be around and talented too. <laughs> yeah, you know, you all agree, right? To our great friend and a guy who helps around here a lot and someone that just pretty much everybody in the community knows and loves. From all of your family too, which of course your mom dropped this off, Wes. Happy birthday, Wes Brown. Wesley Brown turning 23 tomorrow. So if you see him out there... Driving 20 miles an hour, you can stop him real easy and say happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Wes, in all seriousness. Happy, happy birthday to you. Don't forget about the Celebrate with Family event. The Sagersville Hometown Christmas Celebration, hours away. It starts tomorrow. Elsa at the cabins at 4 for half an hour to take pictures with moms and dads and kids and friends and families. Caroling will start at the steps of the Justice Center at 4 and go right up to the time the parade starts. The tree lighting across from City Hall at 5.30. The Christmas parade at 6. And, of course, right at the very end of that beautiful, lovely parade will be Santa and Mrs. Claus and gifts with them on their way to the Sayersville Fire and Police Department. There will be caroling, I suspect. There will be some places you can find something warm to 
drink on a beautiful winter feeling evening out there. It is going to be an awesome parade tomorrow. Make your way into Sagersville. And remember, the parade comes through twice tomorrow in its entirety all the way through Sagersville. And no one can move or get out until it's all the way back through for the second time. It's going to be a great show. And don't forget the 6th Annual Sagersville Funeral Home Toy Drive is ongoing right now. They're asking for any new unwrapped toy. Drop it off at the Sagersville Funeral Home if you can. And all of these toys will be given out to McGoffin County kids for the holidays. Their 6th Annual Toy Drive at Sagersville Funeral Home. Candy Cane Lane now open. Still putting up some of the lights. And Santa will be coming soon. So... Keep that in mind. But for now, from 6 to 10 nightly, a lot of the lights are already up about two-thirds or so, maybe 75%. And with that said, they're going to keep coming until they're all done and plenty of time for the holidays. Candy Cane Lane has become a holiday staple in Sagersville, McGoffin County, and it's back open, 6 to 10 nightly. And don't forget, next Friday, December the 13th, is the wonderful Christmas celebration uh, for all of McGoffin County and Sagersville residents to just come and spend some time together and eat a wonderfully prepared meal that a whole lot of folks are going to work very hard to prepare at the Community Center next Friday. Talk about it next week, and we'll talk about your calendar announcement or birthday or anniversary wish if you'll just get it to me any way you can. One funeral service announcement this Friday. A reminder of services to be held tomorrow beginning at 1 for Janice Sue Howard Jordan of Creekside Court who passed away this week, survived by her husband, husband Albert and daughters Tammy, Valerie, and Patricia Ann Jordan. Visitation is tonight. Services again start tomorrow at 1 from the McGoffin County Funeral Home. From brakes, exhaust, suspension, fluid changes, to expert collision and auto body, to turning your 4 before or diesel from mild to wild, get real auto maintenance, paint, and repair at Black Smoke Performance in Dixie of Sagersville. 349-8785. At Sagersville National Bank, they know your house is much more than your home. It's an investment, and for many of us, the biggest we'll ever make. And whether it's for needed repairs and maintenance or a new addition or renovation to give you some more room and more equity, let Sagersville National Bank deal with all the financial work and worry. Real and real competitive hometown, homegrown, home improvement loans at Sagersville National. Car wrecks, truck wreck, disability, workers' comp, slip and fall, wrongful death. Your case matters to you. Your case matters to us. Contact McFarland Tinker Law Office. With our combined experience of over 58 years, we're here ready to work for you. We have the power to bring everyone together during the holidays. We are you. We are Appalachian Wireless. In sporting news tonight, just a couple of things we want to make reference to. Paintsville, of course, fell to Pikeville in today's state championship on Kroger Field. Pikeville 43 Paintsville zero, and this was a much closer game, nine to eight, when the two faced off in the regular season. Not the outcome a lot of folks were expecting. Uh, Pikeville a favorite going in, I do believe, but nevertheless, that was the final score. While we're waiting on the other half of Johnson County to take to Kroger Field tomorrow, that will be Johnson Central, which is going to be a little extra fired up. And I show this tonight, even though I know that many of you have already seen it. I show this just to simply say, kids and adults, don't do this. Because you have to be a certain kind of moron to say something like this, especially as an adult in front of a school.
I know that uh, a lot of people in Johnson Central can't even count to 100. So I look for four fans defense to hold them under 100 yards rushing. And our offense is scoring 100 points. So I think the ball county was under to nothing. Johnson Central is from the mountains. Back. And in the mountains, they throw this place called Holler. Back. My prediction, the Rebels are going to be sending them back to the Holler to the mothers and daddies a little sad on Saturday. Rebels win. Boyle County School officials, the superintendent, has already gone on record apologizing, uh, saying that it's being looked into. The head coach of the football team has nothing, he says, but respect for Johnson Central, the school, and the football program, and that that was not any of his staff uh, making those remarks. Uh, you know, gee, what else can you say? And I say all of that knowing that how things were years ago when I was a kid and generations before myself, it was certainly not like today. But you just can't do those things anymore. Common sense, my goodness. Okay, I have this for you tonight. I actually have a couple of other little sporting things that I intended to roll in right now and a couple of little interviews to go along with it and just uh, uh, could not get them on before airtime, so I'll save those for later. I do have this video prepared as we have some cheerleaders headed to state. The Harold Whitaker Middle School cheerleading team did quite well recently at KPOS, and they're going to state before Christmas. That's right, the Harold Whitaker Middle School cheerleaders headed to state. This after competing in the 15th region KPOS competition where they got first runner-up in the game day division. The Harold Whitaker Middle School cheerleaders were chosen from a video of their performance to compete at state, and that's where they're headed. The KPOS State Middle and Elementary Cheerleading Championships are held Saturday, the Saturday before Christmas on the 21st, at the Kentucky Horse Park in Lexington. So join me in the course of the next couple of weeks in wishing them well and the best of luck. And by the way, uh, Coach Elizabeth Howard Ossip and Assistant Coach Tamara Howard says, these young ladies and their coaches would love to see anyone traveling that way come and show their Hornet pride as they compete. Saturday the 21st, the middle school cheerleading team headed to the horse park in Lexington to, Lexington to compete in the KPOS State Middle and Elementary Cheerleading Championships. Great job done, ladies, and best of luck to you. Yep, congratulations, girls. Good luck again. I'm going to wrap it up with your Licking Valley RECC forecast, which above all else is beautiful for the most important day of it. That's tomorrow. Certainly the weekend outlook, the most important part of it. And it's still looking, well, exactly on par as it was 24 hours ago for Parade Day tomorrow. We've seen some moisture out there today. We're seeing just... Uh, cloudy skies become partly cloudy for the rest of the evening in a low right around 30. A little light wind out there, north, northeast, 5 to 8 miles per hour. That's it. That will wrap up our Friday. For tomorrow, and all the fun Christmas things that are happening here in Sagersville, a beautiful day in store. Mostly sunny. We'll hit about 47 with an easterly wind, maybe 3 to 5 miles per hour tomorrow. Nothing dramatic at all. Tomorrow night, mostly clear and still just above freezing at 34. You'll need to bundle up, but you'll need to plan on having a nice time tomorrow night in downtown Sigersville. 
Sunday, clouds are going to build and increase, and we're going to see temperatures also go in the same direction, increasing and bumping up to about 53 on your Sunday. A little warmer, but clouds also holding off as far as the rain is concerned until late tomorrow night. Right now, our window looks to be a 40% chance, and that's mainly after 1 o'clock in the a.m. during the course of Sunday night, Monday morning. So a totally dry weekend. More sun in the 40s for the first half and less sun in the low 50s for the second half. Now, those clouds and light showers that do come in during the overnight Sunday and into your Monday, we're going to give way to just rain on your Monday. Temperatures warmer still, 57 degrees, but mainly after 9 o'clock and throughout much of the day on and off, rain, likely. No big rainfall amounts, but rain, likely. Monday and into your Tuesday, mainly before noon, as far as any of the moderate rainfall might be considered. Tuesday will fall down to about 47 for daytime highs, and there might be some of that moisture still lingering around Tuesday night to where it may change over to some snow and some flurries before midnight because we're going to be down into the low 20s for nighttime lows Tuesday. And we're not recovering much on your Wednesday. Maybe some lingering flurries in the morning, but sunshine and 34 chilly degrees midweek. Wednesday night, mostly clear, and 23 Thursday. We're looking at sunny and about 39 and uh, still some sunshine and trying to warm up just a bit on next Friday. That's your Licking Valley RECC outlook for the weekend and the week ahead. That'll wrap it up for tonight and for this week. Hope to see you all in downtown Sagersville tomorrow for what's going to be a glorious Christmas celebration all starting at around 4 o'clock. Plenty of things to see and do and hear and, and satisfy all your other senses probably as well. Good night. Thank you for watching. See you tomorrow, hopefully, in Sagersville and here next week. Thanks for watching again.